else can you hear me? Is it all right? Good afternoon, everyone. We'll be starting with the event shortly. The guests have arrived. Kindly maintain the decorum of the uh, occasion here.
I'm making other people aware of how we dress in our culture also. This chorus is bringing many people together. You get to know their cultures, you get to know their languages, and uh, also make friends with them. I have a message actually. They have to, also Indians have to try with this. <laughs> Very nice.
students be seated so your buses have been deferred by uh, half an hour they'll be leaving campus by 5 5 pm today those who are going by bus be seated here buses will leave at 5 from campus we have delayed it because of the event only please be seated everyone <coughs> सर एक मिनट ऑडियो बंद कीजिए ऑडियो स्टूडेंट्स बी सीटेड एवरीवन योर बसेस विल बी लीविंग द कैंपस एट फाइव काइंडली बी सीटेड नाउ वी आर स्टार्टिंग द इवेंट नाउ द गेस्ट आर अबाउट टू एंटर द हॉल प्लीज बी सीटेड बी क्विक फॉलो द कोविड प्रोटोकॉल प्लीज be seated everyone the attendance for all the lectures in this span will be conducted here and you will be marked accordingly take your seat everybody yes sir i have announced students at the corner please be seated i am announcing one more time
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest of honor and chief guests. Please take your seats. We'll be starting with the event shortly. Kindly switch your mobiles to the silent mode. Thank you, everyone. We welcome our chancellor, Shri P.K. Gupta ji. We welcome VC sir, Parmanand sir ji. Kindly be seated, everyone. A very good evening to one and all. Luckily, the weather is on our side today. The sun and I are pleased to offer you a very warm welcome. I am Megha Chhabra, master of the ceremony. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome, uh, welcome all the experts here sitting on the dais onto this expert talk organized by School of Engineering and Technology in association with School of Agricultural Sciences of Sharda University. Here's to a big welcome on stage to our chief guest, Mr. Sabir Bhatia, founder of Hotmail.com, and guest of honor, Dr. M.J. Khan, chairman, Indian Chamber of Food and Agriculture, and our guest of honor, Mr. Javed Yunus, India advisor, Aramco, advisor to Sabir Bhatia. I welcome Shri P. K. Gupta Ji, Chancellor of Sharda University on dais. I welcome Professor Parmanand Astya, Visioning Vice Chancellor, Shada University, and Dean SAS Professor H.S. Gore to kindly uh, occupy the seats. I'm so sorry. So, the manifestation of the oratorical excellence is graciously seated on the dais today. It is now my pleasure to welcome the guests of the platform. We are privileged to have Mr. Sabir Bhatia as our chief guest for today's event. I request Honorable Chancellor Sir to welcome Sir with the token of prosperity. We have, a, 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 we have among us Dr. M.J. Khan as guest of honor. I request, sir, to please welcome him with, these, uh, with the symbol of prosperity from the gathering. Honoring us with his presence, Mr. Javed Yunus, I request, sir, to kindly present the token of love and prosperity from the gathering. Thank you so much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to today's significant event where we are going to discuss the vision for academic excellence at our, at our university with the corporate giants. We have a great history of academic excellence, of innovation, of creativity, of world-class teaching, scholarship, and research in placing talent with the talent hunters, one that I believe can sustain an inspiring future. The academic strategy speaks of an academic community conducting research and scholarly activity that enhances our teaching and our students' experience that conducts research and scholarship that directly informs our teaching and learning. But what does that look like in practice? Take a look at the work of your professors around you. Take a look at the professionals providing ideas to you in different sectors and how those ideas are helpful in exploring technology, creating buzzers, society upliftment, and connection with the world. Why to go far? Curtain raiser of a product like Showreel by Mr. Sabir Bhatia is one such impactful example that will be able to create professional videos of themselves. Professionals will be able to create videos of themselves in response to questions posed by hiring companies. Even in government sector, how fresh ideas can add up to the point of discussion among our youth, discussed in India Agri Growth Summit in 2021 held in De Delhi, 
the stress upon point was the role of the states and the districts in agricultural transformation. In fact, with the inspiration that we can gather from companies like Aramco, the wide vision of strengthening the business with the Indian companies, such as Reliance Industries, open gates of business minds in the Indian youth. After more than 20 years of excellence, it's time to add one more feather in the cap by inviting our guests today and take pride in the uniqueness that flows from our mission. Time to build a genuinely open connectedness with corporate governance and government policies for upcoming talent of the university to grow and develop with its students for the next 20 years and beyond. So ladies and gentlemen, constantly imparting the intelligence and character in his students, a great visionary and dynamic leader, Professor Parmanand Astya, is an exceptional achiever and a proud IITian. Today, I, I would like to invite uh, Professor Parmanand Astya, officiating VC on stage, to have a red carpet welcome to our everyone assembled here. So. Good evening, all of you. Uh, due to the shortage of time, and I in, uh, welcome our chief guest, Mr. Samir Bhatia, co-founder of Hotmail.com in the Sada University. I also welcome our guest of honor, Mr. Yunus Khan, advisor Armeco, and advisor to the uh, Mr. Samir Bhatia. I also welcome uh, Dr. M.J. Khan, Chairman, Indian Chamber of Agriculture and Food. Welcome, sir. And our students and the faculty are eagerly waiting to get your words of your wisdom. And I'm, I'm sure that the, our students and faculty are going to learn a lot from the great entrepreneur, great inventor from India. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. A famous quote by Mahatma Gandhi. It's important to seize the day, but always make time to go deeper and wider in your learning. The mentor, our mentor, with this vision, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. P.K. Gupta, Chairman, Sharda Group of Institutions. Mr. Chairman, it is a great honor and pleasure for me to introduce to you. It's a source of great pride to all of us, and particularly to all present here, that this brilliant son of visionary parents is seated among us. Unlike most other institutions of formal learning, Sharda University stresses upon not what they're teaching, but whom and how. Every young mind looking for quality education, factoring in your average and not so average students, should take a look at their offerings. From the Hindustan Institute of Science and Technology to the Institute, Hindustan Institute of Management and Computer Studies, and with Sharda University, they cover a large spectrum of subjects. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome Honorable Chancellor Saran Dais to share a few words with us. Good evening, friends, and particularly uh, it's an honor for uh, me to welcome the Sabir Bhatia by long back, maybe around seven, eight years back, we played golf. I was very impressed. In fact, uh, it is an honor that I am welcoming here. And uh, in 97, when we started in the Sun College, I think at the time when Sabir Bhatia was, you know, hot name, he was named, known for the country. So I used to tell my students, ki, maybe I'll be very proud of you if any one of you will reach the heights what our Sabir Bhatia has achieved because at the time, those days, you know, Hotmail was a very famous name. After that, you know, very various, you know, this uh, Google and other things came, but he was the first invention. So welcome, uh, Mr. Bhatia. It was a really honor uh, to receive you here. And uh, Mr. M.J. Khan and Mr. Yunus Bhai, who is the Chamber of, Chairman of Chamber of Commerce of Agriculture and, and uh, Yunus Bhai. So, you know, the it was a part of our vision, the Sharda University should have, you know, the chain of interactions with the people who has achieved in their life. They had a vision, they have created something out of the box. 
because I particularly believe because as a young children, you know, you love to see someone who has been created the history in the country. And as a chairman and as a mentor of this university, I always love that our children should do better than anybody has done in the life. And I always believe that uh, it's nothing but simply think of out of box idea. India is a country where 1.3 billion, 1.35 billion people. And uh, I don't think that uh, the current uh, policies and uh, the way we are going, we can really make this country a developed nation unless until we do innovations, we do research, we create our own product, we uh, create a technology which can be exported. And I think you, this responsibility lies in your hand and I think current education policies, the current NIF ranking, NAC ranking has changed the whole academic scenario. Now the faculty is also realizing the importance of you know, the research. Government of India also has started realizing of, uh, the importance of research and innovations. Prime Minister has already been allotting a lot of funds under the PLI schemes and various schemes where they wanted the, we should develop our own product, we should not import, we should be export surplus. So there's a lot of opportunity in particularly, Samir from the area which is basically, today morning I was reading an article that IBM chairman has said he, India could be, you know, like uh, become a business of a $300 billion export for IT. Because the whole world is uh, looking towards to IoT, artificial intelligence, you know, the data analytics, and this is how, you know, things are there. And definitely I'm sure that each of you has a great future if you can think naturally and think why, why we can't do it. I think uh, there's a lot to do because the technology disruptions are changing every day. So what has been 20 years back, what will happen 20 years down the line? If you start thinking what can be done for next 20 years, what is the, how we can uh, help the people because uh, profit is not what is for me. Profit is what I can do for the nation, what I can do for the society. And this is where you can make maximum profit rather than, you know, looking for a small job. So India need at least 330 million entrepreneurs. So I personally believe that each of you, if you start thinking that, uh, you know, about the why and how, or maybe if you are joining an organization, if you think that, uh, you know, like uh, I'm owner of this company, as an owner, what I should have done it. I think you can learn much better way rather than, you know, going for nine o'clock and coming five o'clock and then, okay, this is my salary package and then let me see what next package is. So each one of you has a capacity to become an entrepreneur because as an Indian genes, I believe, India is a country which is a, it's considered to be a country for traders. Right from villages, from ancient science times, you know, for thousands of years, we have been doing a bata business, we have been doing small, small businesses. And I don't know why uh, we are looking more towards the job rather than creating own business empire. And I think you have, you know, the future of India is an emerging country and there is a huge, huge scope. And uh, I would say that uh, Sabir Bhatia, Enlightenment and Dr. Uh, or other friends, you know, will enlight your ideas and give you thought, what can you do in your future? Thank you, wishing you all the best for a wonderful session evening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, a well-known face in political and agricultural arena, Dr. MJ Khan has made noticeable contributions to the Indian and global food and agriculture sector. Dr. Khan graduated in agriculture from Meerut University, post-graduated in business management from AMU Aligarh, and obtained PhD in agribusiness management from Prescott University, UK. During his two and a half decades long career, Dr. Khan served the government of Uttar Pradesh in animal husbandry department Global Major Glaxo India in Veterinary Division, Indian Conglomerate, and Indian Agrochemicals Association before starting Knowledge Sector Enterprise in Agriculture. Ladies and gentlemen, his theories and publications have influenced the development of agriculture sector and generations of scientists who work toward unifying his theories of the development. I please welcome on dais um, Dr. MJ Khan. Sir, kindly give us your few minutes to address the gathering. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to you all. Honorable Chancellor Shri Gupta Ji, Mr. Savir Bhatia, my friend uh, Javed Yunus Saab, Dr. Gaur, and Honorable Chancellor, Vice Chancellor uh, Mr. Nand. Uh, I was just listening to uh, Honorable Chancellor. Sir, th this is very correct observation. If you look at the IMs uh, of the country, how the changes change have, are happening. Earlier, uh, the students were opting for the jobs in the large corporates. 
then came the banking sector which became the top priority then came the consulting company now good number of students are opting out from any placement at the campus they are starting their own startup so today the startup ecosystem is so promising that anyone with an idea you don't have to have a lot of capital you don't have to have uh, any uh, past background to succeed in the businesses one good idea can be potentially uh, you know building a big enterprise for you and this has been seen time and again Sabir is a leap uh, days uh, take uh, entrepreneur and global celebrity i would say but a large number of examples we have in our own country that are coming up uh, a fairy tale kind of stories that we uh, hear every day so therefore the times have been changing earlier times we used to you know development was more tradition you know based then came the learning based development then research based now today is innovation based and uh, uh, earlier, of course, as we know that 80 percent, 90 percent uh, used to be the agriculture, maybe primitive days, 100 percent economy was agriculture, then came the manufacturing, the services sector. Now, the knowledge economy, that is expanding rapidly. Software industry, which is about $55 billion, is nothing but a knowledge industry. So a good idea can create fortunes for you. And that is how, you know, the inspiring figure, the icon, uh, uh, Mr. Sabir Bhatia is uh, with us today, I don't. I will not take more time. And uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And I must say, it's a very impressive campus. I have traveled all over the world. Uh, I don't see that such kind of auditorium exists. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Gupta sir, for your vision of a global scale. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Javed Yunus is currently an advisor to iDynamic entrepreneur, Mr. Sabir Bhatia. A four-year-plus association speaks a lot about his, about his contributions in advising in the rollout of Mr. Bhatia's cutting-edge technology ventures worldwide. Mr. Javed is also assigned with Aramco AI since 2016. He has played a key role in fostering bilateral business and the investment opportunities with India and with other countries of the region. He has been awarded Young Executive of the Year 1989. The master of his craft, Mr. Javed, has been trained with CF CFP Total Paris, Frank Jeffkins London, and MCE Brussels. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome Mr. Javed on stage. So kindly give us your few minutes to please address the gathering. Well, thank you very much for your kind words. Thank you, Chancellor Sahib, for inviting us here. Thank you all for being here with all your patience to listen to us. Patience of our patience, but, but no patience for Sabir Bhatia. He's the icon who you should really be looking forward to hearing. My role here today is not so much uh, from the organization that I otherwise represent, which is the Aramco. Actually, I'm here in the capacity of being Sabir Bhatia's associate. And in that capacity, I would like to borrow a paragraph from one of his organizations where he worked. Apple. Apple said, here is to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, round pegs and square holes, the ones who see things differently, not, found, not fond of rules and no respect for status quo because they want change. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify them or even vilify them. You can never ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. Some may see them as crazy, but we see genius. And we meant your old company, uh, <laughs> Apple. Because the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are in fact the ones who do change the world. Mr. Sabir Bhatia is a living example of this DNA. He is the person who has changed the world earlier. Do you all have email? Do you use email? Yes or no? Okay, do you pay for your email? Like you pay for your telephone bills and other bills. You know what the reason is? Reason is sitting here, Sabir Bhatia. He is the one who ushered in the revolution of free email by inventing Hotmail, by putting the ISP on the World Wide Web. That is, that is the icon who will be addressing you in a minute. Sabir Bhatia 
is a, a techpreneur. He's not a businessman. He's often referred to as a businessman. No, he doesn't like that word. He thinks that he's here in the world to do good to the world, to humanity, to people, to his country here, to his original country. Of course, his current country is the US. He lives in California. He belongs to, he's a US citizen. But his love for India keeps bringing him back, which is the reason why for his next tech revolutionary concept, he's in India to unveil it since day before yesterday. And if you all follow the news and the media, then yesterday to today, the media has been full of Savir Bhatia and his new app called Shoreel, which he will speak about. So thank you all very much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. And Dr. Khan, particularly, is the person who brings us all together. He is the congregating point for us. Thank you, Dr. Khan. Thank you so much, Mr. Javed. And I'll take your words. And I would like to use the word techpreneur to introduce to all of you Mr. Sabir Bhatia. So Sabir Bhatia ji, he is an Indian-American businessman. And very proudly, proudly, we can call him as techpreneur, who co-founded the webmail company hotmail.com and created the ability to access a user's inbox from anywhere in the world. After graduating from Caltech, Mr. Bhatia went to Stanford University in 1989 to pursue his MS in electrical engineering and worked on ultra-low power VLSI design. Mr. Bhatia joined Apple in 1991. Later, he joined a startup company called Firepower Systems, where he started working on innovative ideas for the internet and started a team and came up with the concept of a web-based database entitled JavaSoft. Later, he decided to create one called Hotmail, which attracted more than one million subscribers within six months. Mr. Bhatia has received some of the awards titled as Entrepreneur of the Year by the venture capital firm Draper Fisher, 1998. He's a proud recipient of the TR100 award presented by MIT to 100 young innovators who have the greatest impact on technology. He is named to the Elite 100 Upside Magazine's list of top trendsetters in the new economy. He's also selected by the St. Jose Mercury News and POV magazine as one of the 10 most successful entrepreneurs of 1998, and named by Time as one of the people to watch in international business in 2002. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage the proud achiever and the man himself, Mr. Samir Bhatia. Thank you so much for uh, your kind words and wonderful introduction, all of you over here. Uh, Javed, I miss playing golf with you, uh, Mr. Chancellor, and uh, MJ Khan, who introduced all of us here. Thank you so much. Um, today I'm going to speak about what goes on in the mind of an entrepreneur and you know, how an entrepreneur thinks of problems and uh, applies the resources available to him or her to, to solve a problem. And by, when I say this, at the heart of entrepreneurship is uh, the most difficult part of uh, being an entrepreneur really is to find a problem to solve. And if that problem is big enough, you may just be lucky enough to be one of those who changes the world. Uh, so I'll go through the thought process with which uh, you know, we came up with the idea for Hotmail uh, more than 25 years ago. I'll uh, also touch upon uh, my current uh, idea, which uh, you know, has been uh, launched just two days ago, and what was the thinking uh, in, in, in my mind uh, when I came up with this. Um, Hotmail was actually founded in the early days of the internet, when there were only about five million users using the internet. And uh, instinctively, I knew that the internet was going to be big, because uh, having worked at uh, Apple Computer uh, and having been familiar with the uh, operating systems of Sun Microsystems, uh, and of course, um, uh, PCs, I knew how difficult it was for computers to talk to each other. And here comes this new revolutionary uh, uh, technology that essentially ties computers together the, the, the world over, which you could use 
uh, to, ex to uh, uh, download information just by pointing and clicking in your browser uh, and getting to the right information in, in a matter of seconds. So it completely eliminated the need for separate connectors that connected computers together. And instinctively, I knew it was going to be big one day. Uh, so the first thing I did was uh, think of an idea. And the first idea that came to mind was, what if we created uh, a piece of software that uh, enabled people? Could you please stop talking wherever, whoever's talking? It's very distracting. I can't speak if I, I hear you know, talking in the background. Thank you very much. Um, so the first idea was to create a database on the web that could be accessed from anywhere in the world. And I did, wrote a business plan for it, went and recruited uh, my co-founder and friend, Jack Smith, to join me. And we started working on this together. Uh, while we were working on this business plan, the company where we were working put a firewall around the corporate intranet. And that made it impossible for him and for me to access our personal email accounts. I had one at Stanford, and he had one at AOL. Uh, and that's when the idea came to us. Uh, what if we made email available on the web? That would solve our problem. Really, that was the genesis of Hotmail. Simple idea um, where you take a traditional email server, and all of the output of an email server, you display it on a, a web browser using what is popular uh, even then and now, uh, uh, you know, is HTML, the markup language, hypertext markup language, and hence the name Hotmail, HTML email. Uh, so that was the idea. Um, you know, um, we went around looking for funding. Luckily, in Silicon Valley, uh, one VC firm was uh, crazy enough to fund two young entrepreneurs, only 27 years of age, uh, with this crazy idea and you know, give us $300,000 to go and try to you know, first create a prototype for it, uh, just to show, prove to them that uh, it, it, it was possible to make email available on the web. Well, we took that money. Not only did we get, um, uh, you know, show that this was possible to do, but we got 100,000 subscribers in three months, and uh, in the first uh, six months, we're able to get a million subscribers, and the rest is just, you know, uh, uh, growth from there on. And, uh, you know, when we hit the first year and hit the milestone of uh, five million subscribers, uh, Microsoft came knocking on our door. And the first question that the team from Microsoft uh, asked us was, you know, are these numbers for real? I mean, you really, do you have five million subscribers? And we're like, yes, we do have five million subscribers because the entire size of the internet population at that time in 1996 uh, was only uh, 20 million or 25 million. Uh, and Microsoft was having a hard time providing email to just 2.9 million MSN subscribers. Uh, so we started a discussion where, you know, we, uh, would host uh, MSN email for them, and that was the start of our collaboration with Microsoft. Uh, very early on, um, you know, it became clear that uh, we wanted to be more than just an email provider. We wanted to also uh, become a portal, like in those days what MSN was or Yahoo was. Um, and it was going to be very difficult for um, uh, us to be hosting email for uh, MSN when we would be one of their competitors. Uh, and that's when uh, I got a call from, uh, you know, at that time, uh, Laura Jennings, who was, could you stop talking, please? It's very distracting. Um, uh, we got a call from uh, Laura Jennings of uh, MSN and said, Sabir, you know, uh, have you thought of an acquisition? Uh, or have you thought of a, part, uh, a merger between the two companies? Um, and uh, you know, I said, listen, that, that wasn't in our, on our cards, but uh, uh, you know, for a price, we can think of anything. And uh, you know, that was the start of the, uh, the negotiation with Microsoft. And uh, pretty much within a year since we had, uh, a year and uh, a few months since we launched uh, Hotmail to the whole world, we agreed to be uh, acquired by Microsoft. Uh, but the point here is, 
if you since then have looked at companies that have become successful and gone on to change the world, companies such as Uber uh, or Google uh, or even WhatsApp or Facebook, you know, all of them at their heart have found a problem or a market need to solve. And that is the biggest challenge for uh, entrepreneurs in the tech space. Out of 100 companies that get funded, you have to accept that 95 will fail. And failure is a part of the DNA of success. You know, to, become, uh, to create a great uh, company that is successful in the internet space, you have to be uh, strong enough to, uh, to be willing to fail because you're trying a crazy idea. Uh, startups often operate in extreme uncertainty, but some of these crazy ideas break through and really you know, find a new way of doing things that hadn't been thought of before. And that's you know, their creative genius. And I will uh, uh, you know, point to at least two uh, that I think have really broken the mold and changed the world as it is. One of them is Uber. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, Travis uh, who, Kalanick, who uh, uh, was one of the founders of Uber, had a hard time hiring a taxi cab while he was in Washington, D.C. And it just occurred to him, what if, you know, I could call a cab by just looking at my phone and revealing uh, my coordinates to a potential a person who could drive me to the airport or wherever he was going. Uh, that was the genesis of the idea. And today, Uber has disrupted the entire transportation industry globally and has become a $60, $70 billion company. Now, that tells you what is the power of the idea. Same thing with Google. When, before Google came around, there were 17 search engines, and these search engines uh, we're all providing search to us, but what Google said is the rate at which the web is growing, there is no way these search engines that are hand-built will be able to keep up pace. So why don't we use technology to identify uh, the ranking of pages and display search in the form of, you know, uh, the most possibly, the, uh, you know, uh, the most clicked upon page or most likely to be clicked upon page and, and use algorithms to solve this problem. An idea, use algorithms to solve a search problem has resulted in a trillion dollars of value. Today, Google is valued at, I think, $1.6 trillion. That is half the GDP of India. One company with a great idea. That is the power of great ideas. And I think that is what Guptaji was referring to, you know? We have the human capital in India. Unfortunately, our system of education is broken because we create armies of worker bees, of automatons, whose jobs will be replaced by artificial intelligence and robots. Those are not the kind of people we want. We want creative thinkers who ask questions, and by asking questions, change how things are done, how, how things change the way how things are done. And, and that is at the crux of entrepreneurship. Now, having given you this background, I will now take you through my thought process in launching and creating Showreel. So when the, end, the pandemic started, which was about a year ago, uh, or a year and a half, two years ago, I, I saw my eight-year-old daughter, you know, uh, effortlessly make TikTok videos. And she made these videos to primarily entertain her younger siblings. That's what sparked an idea. Why, why can we not make a video for a business purpose? Is there room to make a video for a business purpose? And the initial idea was, what if we help? At the same time, you know, a billion people were rendered unemployed because of the pandemic. So the idea was, came to me that, I mean, what if we help people create a video resume? on an app, you know, that would solve this problem. It, it makes the use of uh, video and they can showcase who they are instead of a traditional uh, CV, paper-based CV, they'd have a video. And imagine a pr prospective employer looking at a video 
uh, and making the hiring decision much more impactful than looking at a paper resume. The person is actually speaking about who they are, their expertise, what they have done in life. I'm like, wow, that's a great idea. So uh, I recruited a team of software developers, uh, launched the, the product in December of last year, but found that it had very few takers. Now this is, you know, that's why a startup has to always think, keep thinking and not lose sight of the vision. Uh, I could have given up and said, you know, the idea was, to, I tried, it didn't work. No, but I did not give up. Uh, I said, why are people not making videos? Uh, you know, and uh, primarily we were asking people uh, questions in the form of a text-based question and expecting them to give a video reply. Well, that's not too intuitive because you know, humans, most humans, are not actors. Actors can do that very well, but humans cannot. Uh, so another idea came to me and I said, you know, what if we had a human asking questions in the video, in the app, would, they, would people respond to that and give much more information? Uh, so I went and recruited 25 of my friends, family members, colleagues, and said, let me do a Zoom, a Zoom call with you. And in the Zoom call, all I did was ask them the same eight questions. And lo and behold, I got a wealth of information from, from them when they started responding to these uh, questions that I asked. I mean, 10 times uh, the, the uh, uh, richness in content than, than what you would find uh, in a LinkedIn profile. So that is the app. So the app, in the app, we have digitized myself, and I ask virtual questions. Uh, and I've got four categories. One of them is uh, a professional video questions. I have a personal section. There is a startup section. And there is a management style section. And all I do is ask straightforward questions that people can respond to by video, and the conversation is stitched together, uh, and it's called a showreel. And that showreel can then serve as a video CV of uh, prospective job seekers to send to prospective employers so that they can more easily get hired. And um, uh, obviously, this whole conversation bit and virtualizing conversations can be extended to so many other areas. Uh, one of the areas that we are looking at is to get uh, a constituent base feedback. You know, today most of feedback is done by sending out surveys and making you know survey uh, uh, people respond to surveys. How was your experience uh, on this flight one to five? How was the service? How was the food? How was the quality of uh, check-in? Blah blah blah. Well, humans are not computers. Why should we be subjected to a rating and force our brain to come up with a scale 1 to 5 or 1 to 10? What if we just had a conversation? Please, describe your experience with your flight in this airline. Simple. We are natural conver uh, you know, conversationists for the past 100,000 years. And so if you can imagine, this same app can now be used to collect data from large sections of the population. So one idea is, what if we virtualize a doctor and get health-related information from 500 million people? Amazing. Can you imagine? That will be the most valuable database on the planet because now you have health-related data of an entire population, an entire country. Think of all the AI you can do and machine learning you can do to extract meaningful information about disease, correlation, health of people, give them positive, positive advice on you know, eating right, sleeping right, losing weight, drinking less alcohol, cutting out on smoking. You could transform an entire nation. So that's the power of you know, creative thinking, thinking outside of the box. And that is really the app. It's called Showreel. You can download it. Uh, it's available on the uh, uh, iPhone iStore, uh, uh, App Store, or uh, Google Play Store. And just respond to these questions. I'm sure many of you, if you uh, are seeking a job at some point in time, will need to face a real interview. If nothing else, use it as a practice interview, you know, where you respond to general interview questions. Uh, 
So that is, you know, the crux of uh, how I think as an entrepreneur. And obviously, one of the, my guiding principles in life uh, is, is, a, is a statement uh, that I uh, see every day when I drop my kids off to elementary school. Uh, and and uh, the, the words uh, inscribed in one of the, on one of the buildings is, it is not enough to change the world. You must make it better. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All points well taken. All the insight that has been given to us by his speech that gives us an idea that anybody can cater an idea. Just like Showreel, a purpose-driven tech, we should also try and think, can I explain my idea the way he has tried to explain his? So with this, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce Professor H.S. Gore. Professor H.S. Gore, he's Dean SAS. He's an eminent nematologist, teacher, and well-known researcher. He earned his MSc and PhD degrees with Golden Jubilee Medal at Indian Agricultural Research Institute, New Delhi, in 1975. He carried out postdoctoral research in England. Over 45 years, he worked on fundamental and applied nematology. He is internationally known for his work on solarization and hydrobiosis hatching, and other survival strategies of nematodes. Professor H.S. Gore helped in establishment of India-supported agriculture university in Afghanistan and research institutes in Myanmar and Nigeria. He received several national and international awards and has been president, vice president, chief editor, and fellow of three national and two international professional societies. I would like to welcome him on stage to give away the word of thanks. Esteemed Chief, Chief Guest this afternoon, Sri Sabir Bhatiaji, our honorable guests of honor, Dr. M.J. Khan and Dr. Javed Yunus, our uh, head of the family, Chancellor uh, Sri P. K. Uptaji, our uh, officiating vice chancellor today, Dr. Parmanandji, and the competent dean of the School of Engineering and Technology. Faculty of the Sharda University and the faculty and students of Sharda University as well as of the Sharda group of institutions located at Agra and Mathura who are also right now participating in this particular event on YouTube live. Uh, it's indeed a great pleasure this day to say a few words of to thank the dignitaries who are no less than a constellation of eminent personalities present over here on the dais today. It's a rare day when the creator of some things that we every day use, free of cost, is right amongst us. The creator of many new things to come is amongst us. And he's the person who has not only changed the world, he has made the world better, as he said. In fact, uh, I remember my days in 19, early 90s, when I was in the UK, and uh, somebody questioned me. I used to receive uh, letters, airmail letters and all that. They cost a lot of money. We used to look for a thin paper, so their weight was not much, which, so that the postage is reduced. We could not send our research papers abroad because the postage involved was heavy, and many of the institutions also were not able to even support that. But today, uh, just, just in a spare moment, we are able to talk to anybody in throughout the world. On email, we send documents, big documents, files and everything, and videos and photos, everything. And that is what, uh, free, uh, that is all free of cost. And the, the God that gave us that gift is present amongst us today. The great ideas that he has given, the ideas that he has transformed into action for utility, for benefit of the world, for all of us is here. A lot of new things that are coming up, the show reel and other things, you know, that are coming up, they again will transform the way we work, the way we deal with things, and perhaps we'll be able to 
have a more efficient world than we have today. Thank you, sir, for the very wonderful ideas that you have given today. Our uh, guests of honor, they have done wonderful work, in fact, and they have enabled this uh, presence of service uh, of here in this, con uh, this uh, uh, university. I must thank uh, Dr. M.J. Khanji, who himself is a luminary in the field of agricultural policy making, agribusiness. Throughout the world, he is known, and he has also made a big change in the way we deal with agricultural research, education, and also agribusiness, not only in India, but also abroad. He is the person who has connected India and made India visible all over the world. Thank you, sir, for your kind presence here and uh, for your kind words. Javed Ji, Javed University is one person who, in fact, is uh, strengthening Sabir Bhatia Ji. And he was the instrumental in bringing him here to the Sharda University. At a very short notice, this program could be organized. I am thankful to Dr. Parmanan, who, in fact, agreed to be co-host with the Agricultural School to organize this uh, event on a very short notice and uh, provide all the infrastructure support and everything. I must thank him in both the capacities as a co-organizer, as well as in the capacity of the Honorable Vice Chancellor for giving these facilities. I thank all of you for your kind presence. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the program was a little bit delayed because of, as you can see, the guest was busy somewhere equally demanded. So we must uh, thank you also for your kind patience and uh, listening. Thank you very much. And the Honorable Chancellor, of course, uh, is the person who gives us all the ideas and support throughout the world. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I once again thank everyone gathered on the dais and the gathering here in the auditorium. Thank you for being with us here. So you may all now proceed. I would request all the guests, faculty members, please join us for the high tea. Thank you.